Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Today we're gonna to talk about five ways you can try Linux on your computer without completely wiping your entire operating system or workflow. Whether you're coming from Windows or Mac and you're curious to give Linux a try, we're gonna talk about five ways you can try out Linux in this video. So let's go ahead and start in with number one. This is going to be the best and least destructive way for you to try out Linux, and that is to use a CD key or even an external USB hard drive. Linux generally boots just fine off of external hard drives or USB drives as long as they are 3.0 or greater. For those looking for the color coding, that is the blue on the inside of the USB port. The two, they're generally not gonna be fast enough to have a good experience, although it is possible with some distributions. Now, there's a number of ways that you can put Linux on the USB drive, whether that is the hard drive or whether that is a USB drive. If you're on Windows, Unet Booten, Rufus, or Etcher are the three primary ways that are talked about. There is a Windows tool that can do it as well, but to my understanding, and I haven't used that particular tool, to my understanding, the drive has to be 32 gigabytes in size. But if you have a 16 gig USB 3 hard drive laying around, that is actually enough to test most Linux distributions. If you are on Mac, there are a couple of options. One of these is UUbytes, which I have never used. Unet Booten, which I have used, or if you're feeling adventurous, you can go ahead, dive into the terminal, and you can find the instructions for creating the ISO image onto a USB port on the terminal on Mac, which Macs do run very similar to Linux under the hood. And so USB drives, USB keys, this is an excellent way to test Linux. Now, once you have this USB key, now you need to boot into the system. On your newer Macs, you actually have to go in and enable the option to boot off of a USB key. Older Macs, it automatically does this by default. You plug in the drive, hold down the option key while you boot up the computer. It's going to show you a screen that's going to indicate which operating system you want to boot off of, the hard drive or the USB drive. For a Windows computer, in the modern systems, you might have to go into the BIOS. So consult your board manufacturer to figure out the best way to get into the BIOS. I either use Delete, Setup, F2, F9, F11, or F12. It's gonna be one of those keys. You can get into a boot menu, which will allow you to get into Setup or get into Setup. Regardless, you need to get into Setup and you need to disable Secure Boot. Now, there's not a lot of serious consequences of disabling Secure Boot. It's supposed to be there to make sure that the operating system that you're testing is authorized. For the purpose of testing your Linux, you're just going to want to disable that. It is possible, if you want to switch to Linux down the road, to use a distribution that does function with Secure Boot so you can re-enable that later when you are ready to switch entirely to that option. So that is how you can test out Linux. You do need to get into that setup, test it out, but otherwise you're not changing anything else on your system. Number two, VirtualBox. There are multiple ways of testing out virtualization software, but VirtualBox is probably the most well known. This is the one that I use. It is cross-platform. Whether you're on Windows, Mac, or already on Linux, you can install Virtual Machine. Really the only downside is if you have a low-end system, you're not going to be able to run Virtual Machine. But as long as you have a, a decent processor, as long as you have a decent amount of RAM, like eight gigs of RAM is sufficient, and most modern computers do have that much RAM in them, you can use Virtual Machine. Now to get the most out of it, you might need to go back into that settings control panel and turn on virtualization. Some computers have that enabled by default, some of them have that disabled by default. So if you're having problems with Virtual Machine, go into the settings and check out that virtualization. But once you install VirtualBox, you can really just spin up any Linux distributions you wanna test out, play with them on your existing computer without changing anything else, figure out which one you might like to use and run with that. So there is using a virtual machine is an excellent non-destructive way 
of testing out a Linux distribution. Number three is going to be completely non-destructive to your existing system, but it's going to cost a little bit more money. That is, go out and buy yourself a cheap secondary computer. I like checking a look at eBay, Craigslist, or local used computer supply stores. I'm here in State College. We have the Penn State Surplus Store. I can buy a decent used computer without an operating system for like less than 100 bucks, literally. So you can go in and spend a couple hundred bucks, get yourself a spare secondary computer. That way your first computer is completely untouched. Go ahead and use that second computer, burn yourself an ISO image like we talked about in the first way of trying it and just install it on the secondary computer. Hey, having a second computer laying around is always a good idea. In case something goes wrong with one of them, you always do have the backup and it's the best way to try out a Linux distribution without negatively impacting anything that is already on your system. So I absolutely love the option of getting a secondary cheap computer. I realize not everybody can do that, but that is, in my opinion, one of the best ways to try out Linux because you can do anything and everything with it without even coming close to your other computer because you have not even booted that up. Now, this is a great advantage as far as getting a used PC to test out Linux because most Linux distributions do not need the latest hardware. They don't even really need to be super modern, depending on what you're doing. Eh, Pop OS, maybe the newer um, main release of Ubuntu are a little bit more system heavy. Linux Mint, my favorite, also a little bit more system heavy. But you can try out an MX Linux, a Peppermint Linux, uh, the Ubuntu XFCE or Mate versions. These all work great on a lower spec computer, so you can give all of those a try, depending on what you're wanting to do. Number four is, why don't you get yourself a spare hard drive, take your existing operating system hard drive out, put the new op um, hard drive in, and install Linux on that new hard drive. Now, if you have a desktop tower, most of these can support multiple hard drives. So you take out the old hard drive or just disconnect it from the board, plug the other one in, install Linux on that secondary hard drive, and then you can plug your first hard drive back in and then you can choose when the computer sets up with either the F11, F12 key, which disk to boot from. And that way you can completely non-destructively boot into your existing operating system, which would be Windows in this case, or into your Linux operating system without any problems. Now, this option is not really gonna work as well for Mac because Mac generally has their hard drive soldered in these days. Also, most of your laptops is going to be very similar these days. Although you might get an old laptop, you'll have to take the back off, swap out the hard drive. Or if you got a really older laptop, it might actually have two hard drive bays. I've had some of those laptops in the past myself. So there is your next one. Very easy because you can take out the existing hard drive, set it aside, it will be completely fine. And whenever you're ready to boot back into the operating system, you just take out the Linux drive, put the new one in or the old drive in there, boot right back up into what you had. Nothing will ever be changed. Desktop towers, yeah, you can have multiple hard drives in there and just specify to the computer when it boots up, which one actually boots. This is an excellent way to try out Linux. And number five, and this is the one I personally don't generally recommend, particularly for novice computer users, and this is dual booting. Now, most of your modern Linux distributions will have an easy option to dual boot. Ubuntu has been excellent at this. Any Ubuntu-based distributions, you go to boot it up, it's gonna say, hey, we see an extra operating system. Would you like us to just space this out and install this alongside? That option usually works really well. It takes all of the guesswork out of it and you'll end up with a system that you have a menu to start with where you can choose which operating system you want to boot off of. This is a decent option for if you are running a laptop with a soldered in hard drive or something else that's just too inconvenient to take the hard drive out. Now, there, there are downsides. When you boot up a computer, it first boots up a bootloader. And Windows has its own bootloader, Mac has a bootloader, and Linux has a bootloader. Linux bootloaders play nicely with everything. Windows bootloaders don't play nicely with anything but Windows. So what can happen is if you dual boot, first problem, you could actually mess up the original installation. 
and you don't want to jump in, you want to try Linux out, you don't really know what you're doing, you go to dual boot with your Windows computer and it kills your Windows installation, that will be a bad day and it'll be a sour taste on Linux. And we don't want that to happen. That's why I don't recommend this unless you really do know what you're doing. However, that being said, you can actually get in there and get the Linux working just fine. I would say 99 out of 100 times there are not going to be problems. But where the one problem is you might get, if Windows pushes an update to the bootloader during its regular update process, it's actually going to go in and wipe out the old Linux bootloader and replace itself with the Windows bootloader, and then you will not be able to get into your Linux partition anymore. And since Windows cannot read a Linux file system by default, you will not even be able to get the files off of your Linux system without taking off the hard drive and putting it onto another computer that's already running Linux. Or I think there might now be some applications in Windows where you can install to see those hard drives, but it does risk, uh, it does pose a, a little risk. Now, can you get that back? Absolutely. You can plug a USB key back in, you can reinstall the bootloader. Honestly, these are a lot of hassle points, and this is why I generally don't recommend dual booting unless it's your last option or unless you really know how to recover your system in the event something messes up. So there is my take on five ways that you can try Linux today. Go ahead and give it a try. I'm not saying you gotta switch. I'm not saying that there's no reason to keep running Windows or Mac. There absolutely are, but Linux will give you an option to have free and open source software running in your system. It's going to give you the option to uncouple you from a lot of the ecosystems to try and lock you in. And it's going to give you back control over your computer again. So that is why you might want to give it a try. At least know a little bit more about Linux, even if you choose down the road to continue using Windows or Mac for your daily workflow. Thanks for watching this video and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.